Hello and welcome to Happy Horror Time. I am Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmerd. And today's special guest made her feature film debut in the horror comedy sequel, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. She played the very responsible Lucy Wilson, whose level-headedness and gun-toting skills kept her alive through a zombie outbreak to become the final girl of the film. She's gone on to star in such films as Little Children, Newlyweds, and Getting Grace. But hey, we're Happy Horror Time, so today we are obviously going to focus on all things undead please welcome to the podcast marcia deetland hi how are you cheering, i'm cheering myself on yeah no that's great <laughs> by the way you'll hear we um jacob our producer adds in my F- boyfriend yes my boyfriend and producer works okay. like that he adds in applause so we get this glorious live on stage yeah. audience applause oh my gosh that's magic like broadway <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, so I read that you are from Ohio. I'm from Ohio too. There, Hilliard. Yes, in you Columbus. Have? Yes, yes. My, one of my like dear friends from high school lives there. Who is it? Her name is Amy Donegan. Did you know any Donegans? The name sounds vaguely familiar. Is this really a town that you're gonna she like? Had know? A daughter, just a daughter named Megan and a son named Ryan. How? You might be like Megan's age. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. 18. Uh, <laughs> okay, 20. 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, but yes, I'm from I'm from Springfield. Oh my so gosh, yeah, like literally like 45 minutes from you. Well, so what was it like growing up in the Midwest and how did that kind of lead you into acting? Were you always interested in acting as a kid? I, yeah, I really was like, I was one of those kids, you know, when they would do career day uh, in elementary school and they would say, what do you want to be? And I'd say, I want to be an actor. <laughs> and they would be like, or I'd say, I want to be an actress. We were allowed to say actress back then. Um, and uh, people would laugh at me. Um, but but I did, you know, my first uh, play, I was in middle school and I was in a high school production of The Sound of Music. Wow, who did you play? I played Louisa, one of the bratty kid who like puts toads in her bed. And um, (laughs) but that was like a big deal, right? Because yeah, in this high school production. And uh, I just fell in love with it. So I did plays all through high school, went to L.A. when I was 18, did a bunch of plays there, then finally started. This was my first, you know, Living Dead was my first movie role yeah well we were going to ask you before you even um started with acting and and were in this movie your first movie were you a fan of scary movies growing up like were there any that made an impact on you uh, i was terrified and still am to this day i still cannot sit through the entire exorcist movie yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so yeah. Often. I, mean, I like, still oh, cannot yeah. watch that movie i i've seen so much of it and i like worked at the movie theater and i'd always go in at the same break time with my popcorn and diet coke and you know i'd be like oh my god i can't i know i just walk out so that one i can't handle also carrie i still have not gotten oh, to the- i love carrie once she goes back to the house i'm just like mm-hmm. I have never seen the end of it. Oh, oh really? God. You didn't see it after the prom final, when final she goes jump back scare? home. Well, I've seen that. Oh, okay. I've never seen what happens when she goes back and like her mom is there. Okay, it's so here's not, what happens. Here's, it's not pretty. The mom <laughs> turns on her and stabs her. Yeah, the mom um, is great. <laughs> the mom is, is terrifying. I mean, Piper Laurie was nominated for an Oscar for she that was performance. Brilliant in that movie. Brilliant. But yes, we hear The Exorcist all the time, but with and it and it is a terrifying movie. We hear we've heard Carrie a lot. A lot of people like those are 70s movies. I mean, I want to say Halloween. Have you seen the no, original? No, that's terrible. Oh, yeah. I love Halloween, though. Yes. Okay. Friday good. the 13th? Yes, of course. And okay, I have that's my met, I've met Robert England. Like, I have Ooh. a photo with Robert England because do you guys know who Dan Roebuck is? You must know who Dan Roebuck yes, is. Yes, yes. In fact, playing we were going to ask you about from, was- yeah, from, all the, from all the Rob Zombie movies. Yes, he's playing Grandpa in the new Monsters movie that's coming out at the end oh. of this month. Oh, um, he, he's super excited. He's like my best friend. So oh. he went and met Robert England because he was like looking at the toy collections or something like that. So I have a picture with Robert, which is pretty cool. In Freddie wow. That is totally amazing. Representation from all the horror movies. So you were saying, so Return of the Living Dead Part 2, it's your first acting role. Can you kind of take us through the audition process, like how you heard about it, what you had to yeah. do for it? So I think it was maybe my like sixth or seventh audition in Los Angeles. And 
my agent called and I laughed. I was like, of course, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Oh my gosh. You know, everyone gets their start in, you know, stupid horror movies, right? <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. So I went in, I auditioned this lovely casting director. Her name was uh, Sherry Rhodes, nicest lady on the planet. Um, and then I think I went in maybe for, and then I was called back to meet Ken, the director. And then I remember it was over Christmas. And so I have had flown home to Ohio for Christmas, like the week between Christmas and New Year's. And they called and they said, we're having final auditions this week. You have to fly back. During then- Christmas? During Christmas, because we were starting shooting in January. I wonder so, if that was like a test of loyalty. Oh, I know. So I found a flight miraculously and flew back. And I was actually paired up with Dana Ashbrook and Michael right. Kenworthy, who played my little brother in it. And the three of us actually were like doing all the scenes together and acting all the like a lot of the script out. And I was like, OK, this is some good chemistry here. And I do remember Ken Wiederhorn took me aside and he's like, I think I was with a couple of different kids. He's like, which kid do you like better? And I was like, well, I really like this kid because he's looking at me and we're, we we look alike. First of all, he looks like my little brother, but he's he's engaged. You know, he's not just like saying his lines like he's he's in the scene. And yeah. um, anyway, the three of us all got cast together. So that was super fun. Wow. Well, I have to ask, have you seen the original Night of the Living Dead? Re- oh, Return yeah. I mean, Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> oh, well, that one too. Right. I don't know if you've seen any And, and had you seen it before you were in this? I think I watched it during the audition process, <laughs> which probably went on for like a month, I would say, wow. the whole amount of time, you know, because you go and then there's a callback and then there's a callback. And then um, so so I watched it and I was like, it was incredible. I think that movie is kind of incredible. Were it's you, great. I have to ask, were you wondering, because I'm sure at this time, or maybe you didn't know because you didn't sound like your audition was with him, but were you wondering, wait, how are Tom Matthews and James Cameron yes. in this movie? Because well, I knew they were in it. I mean, I knew they were going to be in it. And I was like, okay, they got n- nuked. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, how are they back? And so, yeah, I was, but it, they're so sweet. Oh my gosh, Jimmy Karen is like, he was like the sweetest person alive. Yeah, no, we and we definitely have questions about them. But we wanted to talk about when you, Lucy, your character's first introduced in the film, you're literally in full 80s garb, like doing an exercise workout. Aerobics. Yeah, you're, you, <laughs> your hair's in a scrunchie, side ponytail. I mean, it couldn't be more 80s. But how, we were wondering, how was the role initially described to you? And at the time, did you feel like you had any similarities between her and you? Yeah, well, I, I I am one of six children, and so and I'm next to the oldest, so I, I do have kind of a I did have kind of a bossy relation. You know, I'd be in charge of like babysitting the family and stuff like that. So she really was kind of kind of bitchy. I mean, she wasn't very not you know she like <laughs> acts like she doesn't know who Dana is and she's bossing her brother around and she's kind of was supposed to not be like super nice. Just she's like no nonsense. She is. You're right. I like that better. Yeah. And it's I also think she's she's responsible at, like in a way that yeah, not, no one else in the film well, that's is the thing. No teenager <laughs> would be responsible, <laughs> but in horror movies, responsible equals surviving. It's true. No, I completely agree with you. They would all be dead if it was exactly wasn't. exactly you were the voice of reason. Yeah, you were. Yeah. And like, and you know, looking, I'm sure as I'm just coming up with this, I'm sure the tough love with the little brother was all out of real love, you know, like so oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's how you are with your siblings, you know? Yeah. Well, what he was saying was bonkers. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, so the, mean, you, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned the writer-director of Returning the, uh, Return of the Living Dead Part Two was Ken Wiederhorn, mm-hmm. who had directed various horror films before this one, including one that Tim and I actually really love called Eyes of a Stranger. Yeah, I love it. It was oh, disturbing. Yeah. I don't know if I ever saw that one. It has Jennifer Jason Lee in yeah, it randomly. Yeah, and she's blind, and there's a man, like, after oh. her. I remember that movie. No, but Ken Ken directed that and wrote. Yeah, that? it's it's not big, but we looked him up and he direct. Yes, and he so he had done horror before this. But here's something we read on IMDb and wanted you to clear up for us if this isn't true. We read that despite having kind of directed horror, that he wasn't a big fan of horror and that kind he had sort of maybe like a lack of enthusiasm for the project that I guess kind of rubbed some cast members the wrong way. Was that your experience with Ken, or what was he like as a director during that time? No, I I loved Ken. I and I still am in touch with Ken and he was fantastic. Um I do think that he I think he was butting heads more with uh the producers yeah. because he wanted to take it in this sort of comedy 
way. And the producers wanted it to be more hardcore, like living, like the first Living Dead was, like the first Return was. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that there were some scenes where Jimmy, because Jimmy Karen is like the consummate gentleman. And I know he had a hard time doing some of the zombie stuff where he's like eating the brains and stuff. It was, it, 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 he didn't love it. Mm -hmm. But I would not say that actors didn't get along with Ken because he was really like, I thought he was great. I really had a great time with him. And I think he was getting more pressure from either the studio or the producers because they didn't like the direction that he was taking the film in. No, and that's how we hear that. We hear that a lot. And that's nice to yeah. hear because I know there's always a lot of conflicts between usually like the director and the studio or producers that want it to be a certain hard. thing and yeah, stuff. But it was, it was a different film. So, of course, it's going to have a different. Tone, I, I grew know? up on this film like I saw a no joke when when my brother, my older brother brought this home. I was like 11. It was on heavy rotation for like a good three months oh. at my house anyway oh my god i love that yes um <laughs> side note but um so your co-star in the movie is um tom the cable guy uh played by dana ashbrook what was it like working with him oh i love dana we're still friends he lives like a half an hour from me upstate here oh. he's also in getting grace because of me we, <laughs> i think he said we, getting grace i was it, like i have him too he also yeah, well grace. he does have he looks so good with his grace um he does, he's in the film getting grace. yeah he's in the film getting grace which dan roebuck wrote and directed and we're all in and um when he was cast, when Dan was casting role, I was like, you know, Dana's here on the East Coast. So anyway, um, I love Dana. I loved him then. He is just this, he's kind of like my little brother, like still to this day. I just adore him. And I'm so glad that we're still friends and still in touch. And that's we, so cool. We love like, each other. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing, like you, when you think about, so that relationship, which started with Return of the Living Dead Part Two, obviously you kept in touch, went into another film and now like, you know, friends, forever like and yeah. think about that like if you hadn't taken this part or if he hadn't like it's just funny how things work out like that and it can develop these types of relationships you know yeah it's really true I mean I it, I'm so happy that we ran into each other years and years and years ago here in New York and we were like okay we got to stay in touch and we exchanged numbers and then I would have I would get together with uh, this woman, Linda Hassani, who was Ken Wiederhorn's assistant on the film, who I ran into like at a playground in New York City. <laughs> and so we got together with Ken one night and I was like, I have a special guest for you. And Dana came and like the four of us all this. Like, reunion. So we, yeah. So we had a few of those nice reunions before COVID hit. So that's oh. so nice to hear. Like, and especially, and then it makes it even more fun, like to do conventions together because it's like hanging out with friends for the weekend, you know? Yes. I'm so glad he's going to be, I'm doing one mid-October and he's Dana's going to be there. So I'm really happy. Um, and Tommy too. Tom Matthews is going to be there too. And I haven't seen Tommy in a long, long time. So that'll be fun. That's really great. You know, one thing that one thing that we really loved about your performance as Lucy in this film is that, you know, although the movie is like you were saying, a horror comedy and there's a lot of over the top performances, you really played your role straight. Like, you know, your character's emotions and actions are probably the most believable. Like it just really oh, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I love again, you guys. <laughs> no, no, I mean, and we, don't, and we don't necessarily we've had both Tom Matthews and Suzanne Snyder on the podcast. We but. Oh, I love them yeah. but like you know they're they're you know they're like Whoa. they're more campy and yeah, yeah. They're campy yeah totally. and it totally works for this film but like i think your character and the way you play it is the one that most people can really identify with because it's a lot more straight like they, I, I feel like that's such a weird word to use <laughs> i know because we're gay are we gay. allowed to say that in this <laughs> i know i probably that's probably not the right word to use straight but, like, role. but what is there another word other than that playing it just it, but you it played in such a believable fashion so people can really identify with that and i'm just wondering what is it tough to not kind of be over the top in such a crazy chaotic type of movie? Well, when you, I mean, my God, when you have a scene with Phil Bruns and you never know what is going to come out of his mouth, Doc Mandel. Hilarious. On the planet. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I fancied myself like I, my, my, what I was looking to as sort of my image for Lucy was, you know, Sigourney Weaver and aliens. So I was like, I tried to make her, I was like, this is my Sigourney Weaver moment. Like, you know, loading the shotgun and going to kill the zombies and saying this ridiculous dialogue of like, they're ugly, they're dirty and they're dumb. Ah, so the I, was like, Boom. I was like, so I just tried to channel her 
And then, you know, and then they'd yell cut and we would all just start laughing. Well, how did you handle, especially the car scene when, <laughs> okay, so there's all the people in the car and there's the, the hand, like everyone else is like going bonkers, but you are keeping the most calm and realistic. Like, what was it like to film that scene? And were, was the car really moving? The car, <laughs> well, it was moving, but it was on a trailer. So the oh, okay. trailer was moving. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yes. I was trying um, to put that together. I was like, wait, it was on a trail. So the, it's well, on the trailer. Yeah, the trailer it's far up on the trailer. You know, when you see people driving in movies and they don't look like they're, they're really a little driving. higher. <laughs> you mean, and they move their yeah. hands like this. They go like this. Yeah. Like, who <laughs> yeah. really drives it um, It was like that kind of thing. And then you're on a trailer. So then they can mount the cameras on the trailers. So, and then the trailer moves and it looks like the car's moving. Um it was pretty funny. I mean, I remember Kenny Myers, who did all the awesome effects in that movie. He's a brilliant makeup artist. Um, he, I like had to throw it out the window, the hand, and I threw it all the way out the window and all the way off the trailer. And he was like, Marcia, that's like $15,000 hand or whatever. I don't know how much it costs. He's like, be careful. I'm like, okay, sorry. Wow. Because literally everyone is screaming hysterically and the scene lasts yeah. for so long. Did you, were you guys, tra and you're also in a really small space and there's like, I think six characters. Yeah. Were yes. you there for a long time filming? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Did you get a little headache? Yes. <laughs> um, and I also remember it was freezing cold, like filming, you know, you think Southern California, as you know, you live there, it doesn't yeah. get cold. Up, about you know Valencia, Lake Piru, that whole area out there is where we were filming. It was like it snowed out there, and we were we had no coats and no anything. We were free. It was really cold. <laughs> no, I totally believe it. Like there's such extremes in California. Like we just went through like the worst heat wave ev ever, and now yeah. you know at nighttime it's gonna get cold again. Anyway, new that's the end of my weather report. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is. I could see now. I'm thinking that maybe the screaming could like warm you up, or maybe it was nice. Yeah, to at be least we were warm <laughs> with so many bodies. But like watching that scene, that always stands out to me because you guys are all in this small car the yeah. hands running around everyone's screaming it's like five to seven minutes straight it's <laughs> yeah. pure chaos it's like so a pure comedy pure, yeah. it's so absurd <laughs> yeah. we actually and, had such a good time i mean we just i'm telling you we would stop we would yell cut and we would just all die laughing because it was just so crazy also the scene with the head it was just like what is oh going my gosh on? get that screwdriver out <laughs> yeah. of my hand i love it i love it there's so many i know memorable things in it and you know as you were saying with the sigourney weaver reference and as we mentioned in the intro lucy does know her way around a shotgun in this movie so did you have to go through any kind of like gun training before doing the yeah. scenes and were they fun to film they were fun although i will say gun, the even though they're blanks they're really loud and you kind of d don't expect the ringing in your ear that's going to happen after you shoot the guns. Did they you give know? you earplugs? No. What the? I just How remember like, shooting it. It was like, Phew! like, you know, when you when something happens to your sound and it just goes. Phew! Yeah. And it, that's what would happen. So I didn't have to shoot the when I was shooting from the elevator, it was from my waist. So that wasn't so bad. But it was like there was a lock on the gate, I think, that I shoot off or something. And that was crazy crazy loud but yeah they gave you like total training the prop master the first jd unlike that other movie that we all oh god <laughs> um they made sure it was blanks they taught you how to shoot it they showed you how to load it you know i had to go through like yeah all that training because i i don't think i'd ever shot a gun before. i haven't i hope i never do i was actually. just, I was <laughs> I'm just too scared say, well yeah. i was just gonna say especially because you look so natural and i was like either she comes from like a family that they go hunting or she got trained well and you put on a cute little vest i know right my hunting <laughs> vest, I like like yeah i like that <laughs> that has bullets <laughs> well, well and also one of the best shotgun scenes is when you literally shoot a zombie in half i mean like it's just that was such a crazy that was such a crazy day of shooting is that wonderful actor who plays the zombie you know he had no legs right that's like it's not cgi it's 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 makeup and he was a really wonderful like stunt actor um for characters that don't have legs who's super strong upper body and stuff like that so yeah so it was like this poor guy had to like crawl around all day in all this crazy makeup but he was such a good sport and and he's so like terrifying and good in the scene and then he comes back up and he's funny too right like you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know that. So he actually yeah. had no legs. And so the torso yeah. part, so the legs were props, I guess. And then the torso part with the zombie was him was as him. a stunt yeah. actor. Exactly. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah. but that but but good. I mean, make it authentic and it and it was great. No, and it looked so realistic, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. So, yeah. you know, in addition to uh, Dana Ashbrook, this film, as we mentioned, had a pretty star studded cast, you know, especially when it comes to horror in the 80s, because your co-stars were James Karen, uh, Tom, Ma James Karen and Tom Matthews from the first Return to the Living Dead and Suzanne Snyder from uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Did you get to know the three of them well while filming oh, any yeah. memories from working with them? Oh, yeah. I mean, Suzanne and I, I love Suzanne. She she actually, I think after Living Dead, she was going to do Killer Clowns, if I'm not mistaken. I, I feel like she got the role while we were filming. I can't remember. Um, I re We talked to her about that because she mentioned about like the red hair and she had yeah. to do it for this one. But I can't remember which I came think it, first. I think she did the red hair for Living Dead. Yeah, yes. yeah. Living Dead. But I'm not sure if then. Yeah. Either way. But yeah, same year. Same year. I, think I, I recall her like getting the job while we were filming and we were like, yeah, that's um, nice. She's a doll. I love Suzanne. I actually got to reconnect with her at a convention uh, right before COVID. And I hadn't seen her in a number of years. I mean, I would run into her. We all hung out as as friends, like after the movie ended, we would go to parties and all hang out together. Dana would have parties or Suzanne would have parties or, you know, Linda Hassani, who was Ken's assistant, she would have these crazy parties. And so we all kind of kept in touch, which was really nice because you didn't have cell phones and stuff back then. Like you actually, and you just can't text someone an emoji and you no. can't find them on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. No, exactly. Um, so, and I would always see Suzanne at auditions because we were always auditioning for the same kind of stuff. It was we were like blonde and young girls, you know, um, until but it was she went great. red. <laughs> yeah, except for that. She was red. Then she went back to blonde. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was so fun to hang out with her. We had such a good time reconnecting, and and uh, we just we spent like the whole convention weekend together. And 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 I adore her. I love her. So that was really great. I'm hoping she shows up. I don't know if she's going to be at any of these in October. I'm doing, but and I, I was. I was just going to say your brother um, in the movie yes. was also in the blob. Did you see the blob? I know. Yes. Yeah. He was in the blob. Because that was shortly after Living Dead because he was still a kid. In yeah. The he was like, he looks or the was same. It was it before? No, it was after, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So many movies came out that year. It is nuts. It's like, it's hard to. But I mean, like, no joke. I watched Return of Living Dead 2 in the blob. Like, Aww. like my parents were like, turn it off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that. that's that's why uh, that's why I think Return of the Living Dead to uh, uh, there's so many people that are iconic to like 80s horror in them even with him from the blob it's like there's so many people all together and that's why I think it makes it such a great film that you can see so many people that you've seen in so many different movies all together you know on the yeah. screen and yeah. packed in a car yeah all together packed in a car for hours <laughs> with the dead hand <laughs> exactly night <laughs> that brings us, um, Marsha, to a little game that we want to play oh, with you fun. where we are going to ask you some simple questions related to your your Return of the Living Dead to co-stars. And all you have to do oh. is answer each question with one of the following names. James Karen, Tom Matthews, Suzanne Snyder, or Dana Ashbrick. Okay, so like, for okay. example, if I were to ask Tim who's the sexiest, he'd say... It's a tie between Tom and Dana. But we're not going <laughs> to There you go. So I can have ties too. Oh, oh, if you want, if you want. But don't worry. Simple, simple questions. And okay. there's no rules. Like yeah. if you're like, listen, I don't want to answer that. It's, it's but it's trust me, it's nothing controversial. <laughs> it's all controversial. <laughs> Everything's controversial with Tim and I. No. That's right. Okay. Uh, I like that. Okay. Okay. Question one. Who okay. was the biggest jokester on set? I think probably Tommy. Oh, I <laughs> love also that you have the like the nicknames like Jimmy Karen. Yeah, like Tommy I can't, talk, I can't right now. Like, like I want to say Tommy Matthews, but I'm like, I don't think I've earned that. Right. right? Like when I met Robert De Niro, I called him Bobby. Oh, of course. Yeah, you yeah, did. yeah. And then you woke up. <laughs> yeah, then I woke up. Yeah, then he woke up. Like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um he was so he was the jokester. I love that. I would say he has got Tom has a really dry sense of humor. That's and what I, like don't even know if he's joking. I totally I got that, that from yeah. him. So he's so dry. Yeah. So I, I would I, say him of all of them. I love it. I love it. Okay, question two. Who was the most reserved of the four? Hmm. Maybe me. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. a five. But yeah, I would say I could see that. I mean, just because you're a teenager, your first movie. Yeah. yeah, I was probably the most like, you know, and plus I'm playing the more serious character. I would say uh, other than that, I would say Jimmy Karen. OK, OK, because he's just he's just like this quiet, beautiful soul. Yeah, no, I can see um, that. Who did you become closest to while filming? Uh, I would say probably Dana. 
Yeah, I figured because you guys have yeah. because it's almost like chemistry. Well, and there's also yeah. like two groups in the movie. It's like you, yeah, he was you, my group. Yeah, yeah, you and then there's the other group, which is Tom and Susanna and Jim, the robbers and, and Jimmy, because you know we're really good friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, question four: Who did you remain in closest contact with after the film wrapped? Dana. Oh, okay. Even yeah. with all those Suzanne Snyder parties? And Suzanne. And Suzanne. <laughs> Definitely Dana and Suzanne, I would say. But but mostly Dana. I Got it, say. yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one's a funny one. Um, okay. who, was the mo- who was most like their character in real life? Probably Suzanne. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> funny. Yeah, I would say Suzanne. She's, she's hilarious. She's hilarious she's- at it. Oh, she's so great. And she, I remember she was like in the, in this really intense acting class at the time. And so like before every scene, she'd be like, <laughs> like yelling and I'd be like, oh my God, okay. Wait, by the way, <laughs> just, just getting into Brenda mode. <laughs> just because this is a, a podcast. So people are only hearing the audio on it. Oh. Can, can I explain what you just did? Because yes, Marsha just did like Suzanne preparing for it is like shaking her hands and going, <laughs> Screaming. She would just scream. <laughs> that is, was a very accurate. It was so accurate because that is literally her throughout the entire movie. The entire yes, yeah. movie. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. Love Thank it. You. That was good, Tim. Thank you. Tim was second was in line. Good. When I auditioned next to Suzanne, you were like, you know what? Uh, the producers were they weren't ready to right. make you they were Tom like, Matthews love interest. Right. They were yeah. like, you're an 11 year old. You were like five. No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So many problems with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Question six. Now it's a little uh little trivia on them. Who made their film debut in an uncredited role in 1978's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Okay, that I think is Dana. That's correct. <laughs> yes. Um, I didn't know that. I had to look that up. I was like, I first off, I love movie. Attack. I, I love I, it. It's such a random but Attack amazing movie. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> I was singing that to Tim earlier. You know the theme. Song. I only saw it's Return like, of like, George Clooney. Return of the Killer Tomatoes? Yes. To- have you heard of that? No. Yes, I have. Okay. Thank uh, you, I Matt. Hadn't. You know, yeah. Clooney used to visit our set because That's Tommy right. was living with him at the time. Oh, tell Tom. us about that. Yes, wait, wait. What was he? <laughs> yes, that's a wait. He we're gonna take so a break. Cute. And... He was so cute and so nice, and he popped by our set like all the time because we he were... was doing the facts of life at that. He time. Was he was doing the facts of life? And so he's he like, I just gotta. Like, he wasn't the clunosphere yet, right? Uh, but I mean, did you talk about Lisa Welch? No, but I really wanted to because I love that show so much. <laughs> thank you for thank you for knowing I, that. Wait, wait. So he was visiting because it was like his roommate buddy Tommy just yeah, to like yeah, check on how funny. that. So he would just like come and hang out. Dan Roebuck also came to the set several times because I was there and stuff. So yeah. Oh my god, uh, I love that. I love anything about George Clooney. You yeah. do. I mean, guilty. Really cool. Guilty. I mean, <laughs> everyone loves George Clooney, but, but really this cool. is not about George okay, okay, Clooney. Okay. This is about uh, Marsha. Go. Question yeah. seven. <laughs> Who okay. was in Poltergeist before they starred in Return of the Living Dead 2? Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> yes. The one that um, Craig T. Nelson shakes and said, you move the, yes. the bodies, but not the headstones. Yes. He's a horrible realtor. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he always plays like a robber. Yeah. You know. I know. And he's such a nice guy. <laughs> I know. And and by the way, just the reason we're even bringing up these random things is because horror nerds like us love these connections. You know, like you tell us you worked with this person who was in this horror movie who then used to be in that horror movie. And we love all these things. But anyway, I think you should you'll know this one. Who had previously starred in Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives? Tommy. Yes. And have you seen <laughs> Jason Lives? Jason lives. Have, have you I seen have, it? Have you no. seen it? No. Oh, I guess we know what you're doing tonight. I think so. <laughs> I did watch Thor last night, but tonight I'm going to watch. It's funny because he plays, well, his his character's name is Tommy in it, uh-huh. um, which was convenient. And he had taken over the role from someone in part five who didn't return Corey in Feldman. part six. Um, uh, well, Corey oh, Feldman. Oh, uh, John Shepard. <laughs> yeah, yes, like, yes, 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 yes. There's been three. But since then, here's a little, here's a little drop of knowledge for you, Marcia. She doesn't care. Tom Matthews. <laughs> has returned oh. to that part in fan films playing that part recently. in fan films doing it he but they're like good i know i say fan films a lot of people are like, oh, like some, good, no, some people make really good fan really films. great yeah. ones never um um never hike alone and and there's like a few of them and tom matthews reprises his role from it That's and they're so really cool. good 
That's so cool. But then yeah. he, probably, he probably met these people. They probably just reached out and they're like, we're making a fan film. And he's like, yeah, I'm in. And, and I love, we that. love that because it's like people who embrace these characters because horror fans, as you've probably learned, are the most loyal fans. They will stay with you for your completely. entire career. No, completely. I agree. I love them. I love okay. you guys. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. We love you too. Okay. Question nine. Who went on to star in the TV series Twin Peaks? Well, that's an easy one. Miss <laughs> Ashbrook. <laughs> Dana Ashbrook. And by the way, just so you know, as a kid, I actually had I, I was obsessed with Twin Peaks and I watched Twin Peaks before I had seen the Return of the Living Dead movie. So my thoughts when I saw them were, oh, that's the guy from Twin Peaks. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love Twin Peaks is was and I was 10 years old and it terrified me in like the best way. It's the most fucked up weird stuff and he returned in return of the twin peaks a return i know of the twin peaks. <laughs> i love return of the he twin returned peaks. in return of the twin peaks i know i know okay. we, were, we were supposed to be at a, at a zombie convention together but he's going to a twin peaks one instead uh, <laughs> we know where his loyalties are yeah. Lynch fans. <laughs> well i can't so. ask you our final question because it was supposed to be a trick question but you already actually used this quote and i was going to try to trick you and said who has the quote this quote in return to living dead Two? look they're ugly and they're dirty and they're <laughs> dumb and i don't even care if they're dead i hate them there's no way they're touching me lucy <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We I know these questions were pretty easy, but you'd be surprised a lot of times when we like we'll have fun questions. A lot of people, since these movies are like 30 plus years old, cannot remember. Anything. But I think I think you really bonded with your co-stars. So like, yeah, you know, yeah. no, I think that that's a huge part of it. Like mm -hmm. we love and it was really fun because the other convention I did, I, I got to know a lot of the Living Dead one cast, too. And they're so much fun, like Miguel and. Linnea and Jewel and there it was just so fun getting to know those people because I don't think I'd ever met them and it becomes like this little living dead family you know I love which, that that's really cool and yeah the first one is great and there's a lot of horror stars you know so but combined between these two movies it's just like it's an entire convention it really is like kind of is I have a funny story for you since you're horror film fans did you guys were you ever Rumpelstiltskin fans we I I'm familiar with it yeah and I know you were in it in the 90s well and well, I was supposed to, I think it's the second one, maybe, but I was actually, it was between me and Kim Ulrich for the lead oh. in that movie. And Dino De Laurentiis was producing. Oh, yeah. So I had to go meet Dino. Um, and then she got it. <laughs> and then the director was like, will you just, will you play this part mom in the beginning? And I was like, sure. But I was almost the star of that film. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's too funny because we saw that you were in it, but like, um, no, George that's Clooney would have came to visit the set. Clooney, I know we would have might have been married by now. <laughs> uh. Mrs. Clooney, no. So you know, moving on to the ending of Return of the Living Dead Part Two, where it's you, your younger brother Jesse, Tom, and they have this mass electrocution of all the zombies, including one that looks like Michael Jackson from Thriller. And yeah. I'm just wondering because there's a ton of extras in that scene. What was it like working that day with all those zombie extras while? shooting and do you remember how many total there were there were a lot i mean you know the the main zombies throughout the film is like a core group of only maybe four or five actors i don't know if you guys knew this so I did not any of the close up like like brian peck is the michael jackson one he's also the old lady who crawls out of the grave um this other guy there's one one girl who plays worm woman and yeah there was only one girl and there were like three or four other guys and they do all the main effects on them i had no but idea then, yeah so then um but then that night we probably had gosh we probably had like two or three hundred Oh extra down there. And I felt so bad for them because they were so cold and they had to lie down there and the ground was wet. And, you know, we just kept trying to make sure they had hot chocolate and, you know, stuff like that. Cause it was kind of miserable out there. I mean, it was dark and cold and they were, they were such champs and such troopers. And I they all had to like shake. I'm, you know, I you can tell yeah. that the, the electrocution lines are obviously added in post production. So they all had to shake like they're having seizures. And I'm just wondering that must have been. They must have had to keep doing that over and yeah. over. I, I would have done. And at least kept them warm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Suzanne Snyder could give them like an acting like lesson beforehand. <laughs> shaking like that we would all kind of stand off camera and like shake with them too because you, know, like, ah, you know and stuff like that okay. was it ever explained to you why electrocution of all things kills the zombies but nothing else does like that's the one thing that kills them no <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 
all that. You know what? There's zombie rules and we'll never get them. We were just I think watching. It's just their brains have to be killed, right? Right. I oh. thought that, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good. So I it never fries their together. brains. It's like being put into like an electric chair or whatever. So your brain gets, that's what I always thought it was. But that's- I know. We Other never films thought of that. Shoot them in the head and stuff. And I have that- a question, and this is not yeah. on our questions. Um, so when Suzanne Schneider gets her head bitten by Tom Matthews, they do this close up, and it looks like there's a quick change. Like, <clears throat> do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like, um, okay, what do what do you know about that change where it suddenly looks like her hair is just a little different and the lighting's a little different? Was there a, like a that's called issue? a reshoot? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know the answer. I, I don't know for a fact, but I would say that's well, called right, but Do you know why that was reshot? I think that they wanted her to make it more sexual. Okay. So yes. when we filmed it. It was clearly playing that way. So then she was already blonde again. So it's a wig. Okay, and then nice. in, I don't even know if Tommy's in the scene with her. It might just be Suzanne. Um, but they just wanted her to make it more obviously like that she was having an orgasm. Which I think is so funny because... <laughs> I mean, as a kid, was, I was so confused. What, I'm Tim sure. Is so, <laughs> Tim is still confused yeah. about... 11-year-old, 45-year-old, I'm still confused. I can't even say electrocution. No idea what an <laughs> orgasm is. No yeah, idea. I <laughs> Can I say orgasm? <laughs> yeah. Happy well, over time. Well, what, was there ever any talk of bringing you or any of the survivors back for another sequel? Because, you know, they did... In 1993, they did Return to Living Dead Part 3, but it has like nothing to do with any of them. It has a completely mm-hmm. different cast. Was there ever talk about bringing anybody back? No, there really wasn't. And I didn't know if it was because like I wasn't sure if if um, Ken somehow had a deal where he owned the characters or if Lorimar owned the characters or whatever. But no, nobody ever approached us about coming back, at least not me. I, and I don't think anybody else. Well, they're lost. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> and, I agree. Um, um, when the film was all done, was there like a red carpet premiere? And what did you think of seeing yourself on a 35 millimeter screen? It was pretty crazy. I mean, I will say, I remember they had a big cast and crew screening at Lorimar Studios, which, what is that now? Sony, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, it was part of the M- old MGM Studios a lot, I think. Oh, yeah. And, and I, Dan Roebuck went with me <laughs> and... <laughs> And I, he held my hand the whole time, which I squeezed the whole time because it was like, oh, my gosh, you just, you know, you, we're not meant to have our faces that big in life. We're just <laughs> and not. it was your first movie. Age, so yeah, like it was my first movie. But it was very exciting. And then you'll love this because you're from Ohio. I worked at a, at a movie theater chain in Ohio called Chackers Theaters. And so I knew the owners. They had like a small little chain of theaters around the Springfield, Dayton, Columbus area. Oh, maybe. yeah. Um, so I reached out to Phil and I was like, look, I'm in this movie. Do you guys want to do like a premiere in Ohio? And he was like, absolutely. And so I went back to Springfield, Ohio, had a big premiere at the movie theater where I had worked. And then we went to Dayton. And this was like the best part. It was, literally had the big marquee. It was like a multiplex. And it said, Marsha Dietlin in Return of the Dead Part 2. And then underneath it in tiny letters, it said, Barbara Streisand in Nuts. Ah! <laughs> oh, wow. You get to say that you I was like, top I've billing made it. Above <laughs> like, Barbara I've Streisand. Made. That's incredible. Um, and what a funny title, Nuts. Well, that nuts. was a movie, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I saw Nuts. Yeah, my mom, my mom is a huge Barbara Streisand fan. So um, I you, knew do all you things. Do a picture of that? I might. I mean, if you want to dig it up. I, yeah. I actually, <laughs> no, that I don't have it in the city, but I have it upstate at my house, possibly. I have to find. I'll try. Oh, I'll like, send it to you guys. Please email it to us because yeah. we would like. I mean, yeah. but that is such an amazing thing because, like, talk about feeling on top of the world. Like, because you went to the screening, obviously, and so and yeah. you are like the star, and everyone's there to see your movie, and it's from right. your hometown. Like, that's amazing. It was really fun, and I did lots of like news interviews and all of that. It was really like really. Uh, an incredible time oh so. i love everything about that the ohio tribune well yes <laughs> yeah. no it's called the columbus dispatch. i might have a picture in fact someone i it's called the what the columbus dispatch remember that <laughs> i don't know but i am in like the springfield times herald or whatever that is i, I actually someone sent me if i can find it the actual newspaper article. Oh they, my God. I mean, if you my dad is to, quoted in it. 
If you want to snap a picture of it and email us, yeah. I won't be angry well, about it. Well, I have to get, I have to get, you know, my son has to get over COVID. I'll get back upstate because these things are all upstate. And I will, if I find them, I will pass them on to you. That's Please amazing. I Thank love, you. Yeah. I love those full circle moments. Like you used to work at the movie theater and then yes. you have a premiere there. Yeah, no, that's oh. incredible. You know, so moving forward um, in 2011, there was a documentary, a short documentary called They Won't Stay Dead, a look at Return of the Living Dead Part 2. And we watched this. It was one of the special features on the Blu-ray that we have. And there were interviews with a bunch of the cast and crew members, but we, we you weren't in it. And we were just wondering, was there any particular reason or, or have you talked much about this film over the years? Uh, no, but I think like I wasn't really on the convention circuit and was that they might have all been at a convention together, possibly. Oh, where they OK, were that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> I only did my first convention like right before COVID. So oh, wow. it's kind of a new fun thing that um, that I'm really enjoying because I get to see my castmates and I get to meet, you know, all the awesome fans. And so it, that's kind of a new world for me. No, so that I makes sense. Really, like, think of, yeah. Were you were you shocked when you first discovered the amount of fandom for like this movie and just horror in general, especially because you said it's only been a few years it, since you've been doing this convention, <laughs> the convention? Um, I was completely shocked. I was like, because Dana was the one who kind of clued me in on it. He's like, Marsha, I do these things. Do you want to do them? And I was like, yeah. So he hooked me up with his agent for it. And uh, it's been really fun to see how many people are because, you know, our movie I always felt. Like Living Dead One, I always felt like people liked that a lot more. And ours was more of like the silly, classic 80s kind of film. But I do think the fans of of Living Dead Two are diehard Living Dead Two fans. Like they're not they're bigger Living Dead Two fans than the whole genre than the whole like rest of the genre, I think. Yeah, so, they are very, very different movies. So I could see well, why like are. there may be people that are like we're only fans of the first one, then people that are like they're only fans of the second one because they are very different. I mean, I'm not know? trying to be political, but I like both. Oh yeah. yeah I mean we I like, like both too. <laughs> and, and well and both have their merits for you know like for why they're they're fun movies to watch, you know? Definitely. Uh, and flash forward to 2018, where it looks like you were in two thrillers called Unintended and I was about to say Preppy, Prepper's Grove. Preppers Can you Grove. tell us about those? Yeah. Is there anything well, I don't about think, those? Two? Well, I don't think Prepper's Grove is ever going to see the light of day. Oh, no. Uh, it, it was it was very, my friend Mark Rupp produced it. He produced Getting Grace and he wrote it and produced it. And oh, my God, you guys would probably freaking love it because I describe it as gay bodybuilder. Deliverance meets Friday the 13th. Oh, oh wow. God. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> wait, wait. What is Gay what's going builder. on with holding it up? You said you don't think it's going to come out? Well, it had some problems with the director and they had to fire her. And then it just never, I don't think it ever got completed. So, oh. and I play like the mom in it of the, of a kid who gets kidnapped. It's really graphic and really like, uh, but, but it would have probably had some incredible horror stuff in it. You like, had us at gay bodybuilder. I know. I was like, enough's <laughs> bad. Definitely, right. I know. Deliverance. Wow. <laughs> you had us at deliverance. But well, how about, how about un because unintended? it's like backwoods, like inbred people in like, you know, upper peninsula of Michigan. Oh, who are wow. like remind yeah. me not to go there <laughs> no, it's actually really beautiful there <laughs> it actually is i know how about unintended um so unintended is uh i have just a small part in it but that shot upstate new york it's not a horror film it's a really interesting movie it's about a woman who thinks that she's responsible for the death of her friend up to like 30 years later which is she finds out that he's actually alive because oh. she never goes and says that he fell into this pit and then she he gets she thinks he dies and so it's like this whole kind of psychological drama of did i kill this person did i not save their life for mm. you know many many years she never knows sounds so, horror adjacent yes horror adjacent <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow okay mm. well no no it's very interesting we were just looking up your um imdb and then like we've been kind of mentioning, although it isn't horror, you did get to reunite with um, Dana Ashbrook in the 2017 film Getting Grace, which, again, we were going to bring this up, but you already did, which also happened to be directed by Daniel Roebuck, who we know as horror fans because he's in like every yes. Rob Zombie horror movie. Yes. Um, what was it like reuniting with Dana on this film and just working with Daniel, who I you know can tell you've known your whole life, I guess? Yeah, Dan, Dan and I were so happy because he tried to make this movie for like 10 years. 
And uh, he was always like, Marsha, you have to play Venus in this. You have to play Venus. And so finally, when we got the money together to do it, it's like, great, great, great. And then uh, it was heaven. I mean, I love Dan. He, I, I met him when I was 19 years old, you know. So when we have been close all of these years. And even though I moved to New York, we still, I mean, I'm the aunt to his children. He's Uncle Dan to my kids. You know, we're just very, very like best friends. Um, so that was incredible. And then to bring Dana into it just made me so happy because it was like a whole full circle thing. And Dana's great in the movie and Dan's amazing in the movie. And Dan and I actually have, have since that movie, we've done two other films together that we did during COVID that haven't come out yet. Um, oh, wow. that's yeah. so great. I love that. Like such a like a long lasting, like for life friendship, like and, and just, that's so cool. Does he have like a lifelong friendship with Rob Zombie? Like, what's the story there? I know that they I mean, I don't know the first movie he did with Rob, but they have known each other for a long time. I, I you know, Dan was a big uh, horror film collector too, toy Got collector. It. So he met a lot of people in the toy world and the horror film world through that. So I don't know if that's how he initially met Rob, but I've never met Rob. I would like to, I think he's super cool. Um, but Dan loves him and they just have a great working relationship together, but I'm not sure the first film they did together, but it's been a number of years. It's funny because it sounds like Dan kind of treats his films kind of like Rob Zombie, where he keeps like the similar cast and crew, like, you know, working with you and stuff. Cause Rob Zombie works with like, there's like eight to 10 actors that you literally will see in every right. one of his films in different roles. And Dan is one of those people. So yeah, an Dan, interesting connection. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Dan loves working with him. I do know that. Uh, I'm sure Dan would do your podcast. We would love Ooh, to I'll have him. Touch with you guys. Thank I mean, you. Have, well, get my number. Oh, you have my number, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you mentioned that you did conventions before um, COVID started. So what's the most common thing people at conventions ask you? A lot of them just want to know like what what it was like on the set. A lot of them ask about the screwdriver in the head. <laughs> <laughs> character. <laughs> That's probably everyone's favorite line in the entire movie is get that damn screwdriver. Get that damn <laughs> screwdriver out of my head. Yeah. Um and so that's that's mostly I think what they ask about. And then some, you know, they're very sweet. They want to know what you're up to now and you know, we did a um we do panels and people ask questions and a lot of times they just want to know like what you're working on now or if you're going to be in any other horror films. Oh my so gosh, that, those were our, our two, next question. Those are our next <laughs> There you question. go. What are you up to now and would you ever do another horror film? So we're at a convention with you. <laughs> I would so happily do another horror film. It never ended up happening for some reason. I remember auditioning for like Phantasm 3, didn't get it. Rumpel still skin too, didn't get it. I remember going in on a lot of them um and it just never happened again. So I don't know. I mean I have two films that oh. I uh, shot upstate and one of them is a kind of a thriller called confession. And uh, it's, I would not put it in the horror world, but it's definitely a thriller, like a murder mystery. You know, it's like a woman who was, um, who was gang raped and then it's like getting revenge on the people kind of a thing. And sounds like I, I spit on your gra yeah. I spit on your grave. It's, it's a I know, horror movie similar. Where, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well she's not like going around killing them, but she's like finally turning them in and you know prosecuting oh, got it. Okay. Their okay. legal issues because she waited too long and it's like so the PG-13 version of I Spin on Your Grave. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, that might be. I don't know the rape scenes. Or they might oh, be. Good God, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I have my other, other film I'm in. Oh, is this guy? Because uh, I did a lot of films with Ed Burns. I don't know if you guys know who Ed Burns oh, yeah, is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've, I've done Eddie's like last four out of his last five films. Um, you no, know, he's pretty easy on the eyes. Oh my goodness! He very <laughs> easy on the eye. You you have been able to work with many guys who are very easy on the eyes. Yeah. I was... <laughs> I'm very lucky that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I adore him. We I did so we did like four films in in about five years or six years in the you know oh gosh when was it in the teens like recently you know <laughs> newlyweds Fitzgerald family Christmas um and stuff like that and it was a similar thing where he was doing these micro budget films again. And using the same cast in like these three oh. movies and stuff like that. So they're really fun. I love them. I love him. Um, but anyway, because of that, there was like an Ed, this Ed Burns super fan guy named Eddie Crawford who lives upstate. And he finally just made his first film. So he was like, would you play 
Dr. Bennett at the end. I'm like, oh, Dr. Bennett. Huh? Uh, and he's like, yeah. And I said, sure, Eddie. So that film luckily got into the Woodstock Film Festival too. Oh, congratulations. It's called 60 Miles North. I haven't seen either of these. So, so Confession and 60 Miles North. We will keep yeah. a lookout for those. That's amazing. And then, yeah. of course, we have to ask if the powers that be, if they decided to make another Return to the Living Dead film and they wanted to revisit the survivors, would you be up for reprising the role of Lucy? Oh my gosh, in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Uh, awesome. Absolutely. She Think was about badass. It. I mean, also, but why haven't they? Because they could bring you and Dana Ashbrook and your little brother. I forget what is. But he's not little anymore. Well, he's, well you know. <laughs> he's going to be at one of the conventions. That'll be fun to see him. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's the thing they could like. And the thing with nowadays, as you see, all these horror properties are like going back to the original films and like bringing back legacy characters. So like you would think that they would maybe be Any, interested. You know, in anything's them. possible. I like this idea. Put that out there. Let's put put it putting out. out into the universe. We're putting that out into the like universe. It. Well, Marsha, we have one final question for you. And okay. thank you so much. You've been amazing. You're so sweet. It's been so much fun to talk with. Thank you, really. Yeah. Thank um, you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what is we ask this to every single person at the end of their interviews? And um, what is one thing that you can tell us about your experience working on Return of the Living Dead Part Two that you've never told any other interviewer, publication, convention? You're your son q a your kids no but you just one thing and can be the tiniest thing it can be the biggest thing um that you've just never talked about or never told in any interview or convention panel about your experience working on that film no pressure okay well i'm not gonna name the person okay, okay. but there was someone that i got kind of close to and had oh. a little thingy thing with and i'm not gonna say who it was and we used to like sneak around those um tract houses that weren't quite built yet you know where we were filming and like make out in them oh that's I a good love one it. that but is I'm a not great say one who it was. I'm not we say won't who it was. ask you who it was james <laughs> perrin no we won't <laughs> no, I it, wasn't, hope... it wasn't jimmy no no no, no. i just <laughs> hope it was tom the cable guy but whatever uh, we are not we are not gonna say <laughs> who we want it to be dana ashbrook or tom <laughs> matthews we are not gonna say no that is that's amazing a that is a good one and you know what's so funny is that those like development areas are perfect for hiding spots so i could totally imagine this oh yeah you're filming all night long and you're like hey let's go take a break <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i'm well, gonna ask a really dumb question are you ready i have you been back to the neighborhood since like it's been built i don't know if i've been in the exact neighborhood of it but my my best girlfriend irene lives like in those areas where of those houses like i don't remember exactly which development we are filming in but it's all those you know little houses on a hillside like weeds they all look alike yeah, so it's yeah. definitely so i have actually spent a lot of time up there and and the studios like we were the first film to shoot in those uh sound stages up in valencia which now are huge they film there all the time so we were like the first production there Wow, that? that's not a dumb question. That's a good oh, question. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> well, well, seriously, Marcia, thank you so much. We have had a great time. This was so much fun with us. So much fun with us. Oh, you had so much fun with <laughs> yeah, us. What I, I meant know. to say Me too. is Electrician. this was so much fun for us because <laughs> we really enjoyed this film. We really loved your part and we really enjoyed speaking with you. So thank you, really. Yeah. I had a great time too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we we will, yes, and we will keep in touch as to when the um, interview's coming out and we'll email you. And yeah, yeah. definitely. We really enjoyed this. Yeah, you're oh, awesome. I had a blast. Thank you. So are you. So, Have a good Sunday fun day. Okay, take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Happy Horror Time. This podcast is hosted by Tim Murdoch and myself, Matt Emmert. It's co-produced by Jacob Randall. We release new episodes every Monday and we switch off between reviewing new horror films with spoilers and interviewing horror stars. So there's something for everyone. You can listen to the podcast directly from our website. That's www.happyhorrortime.com or from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you stream podcasts. And if you'd like to support us, please sign up to be a patron at www.patreon.com slash happyhorrortime. Patrons get access to our monthly bonus episodes where we discuss past horror films according to a theme. They get to vote on those themes. They get our monthly newsletter, The Happy Horror Times, 
and autographed Happy Hard Time stickers. If you haven't already, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Happy Hard Time. And since our movie reviews do contain spoilers, we always post the films we're going to review a few days in advance on our social pages just in case you want to watch them beforehand and be in the know with us. And finally, if you'd like to contact us directly, send an email to happyhorrortime at gmail.com. We especially love it when you tell us how sexy we are. I'm Matt Emmert. And I'm Tim Murdoch. And we hope you have a happy horror time. time.